Okay, so this will be the first of several videos on the True Count Clutch. We're going to talk uh, disassembly and cleaning. Uh, in later videos, I'm actually going to put these on a planner so you can see how they go. Uh, this one is actually intended for a John Deere. A Kinsey will be identical except for the guts on the inside, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, yeah, they're way easier to clean and easier to look at when they're off the machine. Uh, but in this case, which is a hex, hex shaft mounted True Count, they'll be easier uh, or fairly easy to clean and have a look at when they're on the machine because you can't put them back together wrong. So let's get into it. Okay, first thing, as long as it's off, I'm going to take these three 516 bolts out. That'll take our sprocket off. Next thing, I'm going to flip it over. Phillips head screw. How'd that go? Okay. Next thing I'll do, and you do, again, doesn't have to be done in this order necessarily, is this air cylinder on top. That's removable. It just threads out. Okay, so now we've got the two cases. Note that we've got the deep half and the shallow half. So what we got to do, and usually you're going to want to use a tool to do this, but we've got to turn this shallow half just a little. What I might have to do, even though they're clean, just take it, sit it on the bench, and give this tab a shove. See how the hole doesn't line up anymore? At this point, I'm okay to pry it apart. Flat blade screwdriver will help. Just remember, we got this case under tension here. From that seal this this blue seal is a is a dust seal and it's kind of gripping that hub and if you're doing this on the planner it's not such a big deal you, you they won't come off the hex shaft so you really can't lose parts uh, if you have if you have meter mount style clutches though you can we'll get to that in a bit so okay there's the inner half so when you're taking these apart if you're taking them apart off the machine same deal we'll pop that through the seal Pay particular attention to this plastic piece. Now, depending on what you have, these are these white ones are older. They're called an eight-stop stop color. So, newer ones are black, and instead of having a ramp and a stop and a ramp and a stop, they have cuts left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Um, those are called sixteen stops. So, what that amounts to is they're they're more accurate on the shutoff. Basically, you you have half as many opportunities. Uh, for the plunger on the top to actually stop this collar. Remember this, this little plunger, there's my wrench, this little plunger pops out of here and engages this collar, which uh, either frees or loosens the wrap spring that actually makes the, the clutch stop, that makes the, the driven side where our sprocket mount to continue to stop even though this side is turning. All right, let's get a little deeper into it. So next thing we need is to pop the snap ring off. It's got a little indentation. You can do it with a screwdriver. Don't need snap ring pliers, although they don't hurt. They're actually more helpful to put them back together than they are to take them apart. Come on, you bastard. Okay, snap rings off. Now we'll shove the metal apart. So, stop collar. I've got the driving hub, a wrap spring, and the driven hub. So they fit together just like this inside that stop collar. So what it does, if I'm driving it this way, it affects, but I stop that collar, it loosens the spring and lets this one, the driving side, override the driven side. But in normal operation, and that's kind of the nice thing about the true counts, if we don't apply any air pressure to them, they're locked together. They're locked together at all times. But if I basically allow it to loosen this spring, now the two are independent, so 
plunger, knocks the stop collar, holds the spring tight, and doesn't allow them to, to wrap and engage anymore. Start plant, stop plant. That's how it works. Uh, if you are putting a John Deere style clutch on a Kinsey, if you're taking a used one and moving it to a Kinsey, you've got a different spring. So there's a right hand spring and a left hand spring and some has something to do with the, I mean, I've never done them on a Kinsey. It's something to do with the, I think the meter drives backwards or maybe it's the way the clutches mount actually on the hex shaft. So if you're doing it, you'll have to order a, uh, if this is, this is right hand, then you need a left hand or vice versa. So you change the springs, otherwise clutches are the same. So we'll put this back on again, paying attention to our stop collar. Uh, if you have the eight stops, you have to pay attention to which, which side the ramp is on the stop. I know that as the clutch turns, the ramp, the ramp needs to slope to the rear. Uh, if you have 16 stops, that doesn't matter because they're, they're cut out left, right. So I think you can run the stop collar either direction. So I'm going to kind of slide this back together. These are only lubricated with silicone spray lube, which there's the stuff Trimble recommends, and then there's this stuff, which I bought at O'Reilly's. Good enough. So go ahead and put the snap ring back on. It'll make an ass of me before we're done. Like I said, pliers make that easier. You can force it, but you can also deform a, deform the snap ring pretty easy, which I think I've already done here. There we go. Good enough. Is that engaged? Yeah, looks good. So, okay. Same thing. Going to drop this back in. Give it a good shove into this seal. Make sure that seal's nice and seated on this hub. Then I'll put the other side back on. Uh, what I didn't mention, what you're going to see if these are, especially if they won't stop planting, when you take this apart, it's going to look like a Oreo cookie exploded in here. It's going to be full of nasty black shit. Uh, if somebody used the wrong kind of lube, if somebody put WD-40 or oil in there, it's going to be full of gummy nasty black shit uh, so don't do that um, silicone spray lube only and honestly I recommend very very little and and just just a quick just a quick puff of it uh, from year to year you'll use the big screw you take the big screw out it's a lube port that's all that is uh, it's yeah you don't normally need to take these apart unless there's an issue it, but in this case I bought these used I'm going to put them on my planner so they had to come apart for a deep cleaning they look like they look like ass when I got them. They were nasty inside and out, but I think I'm going to be happy with them. So, okay, we shoved the shallow side back in. Going to give this a turn. Back to where I can see the screw hole again. And that's it for the lower half. I'll go ahead and find it here. Go ahead and screw this back together. That's it for the internals of the clutch. Next piece of interest here is the air cylinder. So this is just a, a pneumatic cylinder. Uh, this does not take silicone spray lube. This takes air tool oil. So what I do is every year, put a few drops of that oil in there. Take your hex key, stick it in there. Run the plunger in and out. Let the seals take up that oil. That's it, just a drop or two, because what we don't want that doing is uh, bleeding by the seal and in here. Remember what I said, there cannot be oil in here, you'll have problems quick. It, it gathers. These aren't a good enough seal to keep all the dust out, so if you let oil in there, you're inviting problems in. So we'll go ahead and thread this back together. Hand tight's good. Uh, I will bolt that hub back on there, and that's all there is to taking care of a true count clutch.
but more to follow. We're going to talk the rest of the parts of the system. I'm going to hook this up with a precision planning row flow setup on my 7200 John Deere. So stay tuned.